So what is your definition of the word vow? We hear about vows in marriage. Maybe here or there you might hear it other places, but what does it really mean to keep your vows? How important are they? Do they even matter? Well, the answer is yes, and we're going to explore that a little bit more today. We have David and Tracy Sellers with us here from Vows to Keep Ministries. And before we even jump into this topic, the word vows is in your name, Vows to Keep. Yes. How, did you, how did you come up with that title? Well, it was something that was derived from the fact that we recognized when we got married that we made a promise to God. Mm -hmm. We made a promise to each other. And uh, when you got married, I su suspect it was something very similar. Yeah. A lot of people make vows and don't necessarily realize that they're making those vows truly to a covenant-keeping God. Mm -hmm. And biblically, we are called to make vows that we're going to keep. So that's where our name came from. It's a choice that we made. It's not something that she forces me into, um, but it's a choice I have to keep making over and over and over every day. And these vows that are really a promise of a lifetime. The world that we live in and our sin nature tells us that they're optional, that what we said at the altar to one another is really just based on performance, that as soon as you mess up, now all of a sudden it's a legal agreement that I can get out of if I get lawyers and a judge involved. We were having a conversation with a gentleman here a few weeks ago and he pointed out the fact that I feel like my marriage is probably very temporary. And he, he said, once my kids get grown up, and they're moved out of the house, I probably won't have a marriage anymore. Mm. We hear that a lot. And on some levels, it's, I guess, understandable that our kids have a great dependency on us. And we recognize that we've made a, a vow to them to raise them. But God, I think, really holds us accountable to the fact that we've made a vow first to him. As Christians, that should be our first vow. He's our first love. And then comes our marriage vow. And then comes our kids' vows, right? The, the, the desire to take care of them. But it's, it's in that order that we really have to do that. Yeah, definitely. The word covenant is not something that is probably used or understood as much right. as it was in the past. You read the Old mm -hmm. Testament and you recognize covenants were, I mean, they were, as, yeah. Yeah. They were a big deal if you broke them. Absolutely. But really today we're in that same situation. Mm -hmm. We are under a covenant and we start with God. And it's a covenant that we're not to break. Even in the most difficult moments where you think you cannot stand that guy or that girl any longer, any longer. God still yeah. is saying you made this promise. Yes, because when you get two people living under the same roof that are both sinners, one of them's going to mess up pretty quick. Just and one? Just one. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got the choice to make. Am I going to keep my covenant to them in spite of their fall? But a covenant marriage says to the Lord first, God, I'm going to love this man through your love, with your love, and not only when he does everything just right, but I'm going to serve him and be your hands and feet in his life even when they break their promise to me. Yeah, when, we, when we keep our covenant to our spouse when they failed, I mean, that's basically you're following through with, with, with what Scripture calls you to. You're applying the, the verses of the Bible mm -hmm. that I think compel us to, to, to keep these vows. We're also responding often in forgiveness, right? That, yeah. that becomes our reaction. It has to become a reaction in order to keep that covenant, which mm -hmm. is so important to do. When we follow through on these commitments, we basically are keeping our vows. It's very simple. When David loves me the most, Jennifer, and I deserve it the absolute least, mm -hmm. you know those kind of days, that's when I can almost like visibly see him keeping his vow to me, keeping his covenant, responding the way God would respond to me. He's so gracious to us to keep drawing us back to himself over and over. And you were going to speak to how he treated Israel. Yeah, in Psalm 116, verse 12, it says, What shall I return to the Lord for all of his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation. I'll call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. Like Tracy said, in the Old Testament, um, God is really referred to as a husband and Israel is basically referred to as an unfaithful bride and he makes that um, he makes that very clear in Jeremiah 31 where he says they broke my covenant even though I was a husband to them in Hosea Israel is actually referred to as a harlot mm -hmm. and this is because they're worshiping idols they're basically cheating on God I would imagine that even in our own marriages, I hope that we're not saying we're worshiping idols and cheating happens, but we don't want, 
not every couple has dealt with that, but every sure. couple can say that mm -hmm. I am cheating my, my husband in some way. Yes. Yeah. I'm doing something. Yes. And yet I also feel like we live in a society where, where even Christian couples aren't going into marriage understanding what covenant really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. can you give so many suggestions to these couples at home who never even thought about this? They never even thought about the mm -hmm. fact that I have signed a covenant, mm -hmm. yeah. a covenant that doesn't end. Sure. Well, I think there's, there's probably some people that would be listening to us today who had a very nominal relationship with God when they got married. Mm -hmm. And so at best, they were making a covenant to their spouse. Um, there's probably some that would be listening that didn't have a relationship at all. So they were purely just making a covenant between two people, and that is a we covenant. I, I would recommend that people, I'm messing up a lot, so I apologize. Okay, okay. No, fine. All right, let's stop for just a moment. Yeah. You can collect your yeah. thoughts. So I'm trying to think, so you're asking practical ways. We don't have a lot in, listed in here. Well, but and we can, we can even take that completely out. Okay. We can go a completely different direction. That's all right. Um, I guess I was just thinking about if there's people at home, what's the hope we can give them? Yes. You know, that, that yeah. it, wherever they are, wherever, right. however they started, yeah. mm -hmm. that it's. I think it's in recognizing the gospel and how it applies to them right then and there. That's the hope. That's really the only hope we have. And when they recognize that God has made a new covenant with us, right. with the blood of his son, then we can respond to that by keeping our covenant. So. Or if that's not even a good direction, we can, no, we no, can no. divert to where you <laughs> wanted to be going. Because um, I, I can go back and cut out and then okay. put together. And w what we were going to talk about, and again, this this may or may not fit, was essentially saying that Israel was unfaithful and we're unfaithful, which is kind of where you mm -hmm. were headed. And yet God steps forward and offers up Jesus as a solution to our unfaithfulness. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're called to do in marriage. And it's something that I think we oftentimes forget that the, it's not just an example, but actually an empowerment. He, he gives us what we need to actually be able to do those things through the Holy Spirit to be able to press forward and to love someone when they don't deserve the love, right? Or we don't think they deserve the love. Yeah. So that was All kind right. of the direction. Well, we can, we went, I can edit to the point where you, you read the scripture and okay. then we can just keep going with the Israel thing. Okay. Um, do you want to do that, Trace? Let me think of a, um, which part, babe? Do you want me to ask a question, just something simple like, you know, how, how does that, how does Israel apply to our marriage covenant, or how? Yeah, that's fine, um, yeah. Do you want to pick up <coughs> Tracy in nine? <coughs> nine, like where I'm pink? Or do you want me to, to reread the scripture? Do you have any idea approximately where we were time-wise when I, when I was cut, when I stopped? I know it's just an estimation. Okay, okay. Um, Let's see here. Do you want to? Um, I could restart by reading would, Psalms. Is that what you think? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, you could, that. Okay. Okay. you could do that. Okay. All right. All right. Um, why don't you just go ahead and start and read that whole sure. whole thing? Okay. Do you feel confident just to keep talking, and then I don't even yeah. have to ask anything? That's and fine. you can just go or ahead you and can do say, that. How, how does Israel's relationship with God apply to us today? And then we can go from there too. Does that sound yeah. good? Um, so I'll start reading. Then when I stop, you can ask that question to her, and that probably okay. will yeah. that'll yeah. lead pretty yes, well. Yes, it will. We yeah. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. Are they, Are ready? Are they still going? Have you pulled down your, your pan leg? I was just noticing that. That is so funny that we both noticed it at the exact same time. <laughs> I want to read from Psalms 116. This is starting in verse 12. It says, What shall I return to the Lord for all of his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people, and especially in the presence of this marriage. Mm -hmm. God made a covenant to his people, just like a husband would make a covenant to a wife. And in Jeremiah 31, we read, it says, they, they broke my covenant even though I was a husband to him. I mean, God's actually saying, this is personal to me. In Hosea, Israel is even referred to 
as a harlot, a cheating wife who's worshiping other gods. Israel, we hear about Israel, but we don't always apply it to our marriage. Mm -hmm. so, so how does Israel, how can we look at these scriptures and say, this is a picture of God's marriage with us or our marriage with each other? Sure. So. If you read through the Old Testament, you're going to realize really quickly that Israel continues to be unfaithful. She continues to break her end of that mm -hmm. promise covenant. But God doesn't just reach out to her and draw her near again and again. Of course, he does that, but he doesn't stop there. And I love that because he offers us a new covenant, not just to Israel, but to us sitting here today. A new covenant in the name of Jesus and the blood of his son. How precious. Yeah, in Second Timothy, it says that, you know, if, if we're unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. He's got a character which basically defines what faithfulness is and makes it so that the vows that he's made are very clear, very um, holding. They, they, they're steadfast, and that's what we're to model. I don't know what your vows look like on your wedding day, Jennifer. Maybe you wrote your own. We kind of went with the standard, you know, I, Tracy, take you, David to be your wedded wife, to you know, to have and to hold, for rich or for poor, I pledge my faithfulness, all those things. No matter what those vows look like, no one has ever upheld their end of the bargain perfectly, mm -hmm. ever. But when we see our spouse breaking one of those, we feel justified in walking out of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's when we need to turn back to the gospel and turn back to Jesus because he models for us a complete acceptance of us despite our failures. In fact, in Romans it says, that while we were still sinners, that's when he loved us the most. He didn't wait till we got it all cleaned up. And I'm so grateful to serve God like that in a marriage like this underneath his covering. It's such a blessing. Marriage is a long-term thing. And I, I, as I'm listening to you, I unfortunately think about the number of marriages that don't make it because they divorce at a certain point. Yes. And I think back to my own marriage with my husband and you know, we're past the 20 year mark. And I think back to the periods of time where people who weren't standing with Christ, mm -hmm. and we weren't always, but that's our goal, mm -hmm. is how they would give up. Yes. And then I look back, what if I would have given up at that point? Mm -hmm. But you know, a covenant says, it's gonna go like this, mm -hmm but then you're gonna get here, yeah. you know, and how, <clears throat> how God can, can keep going yeah. when you do that in the long haul. And maybe like David was saying, if you didn't have a relationship with God when you said your vows, now might be the time to make some new vows between you and God first and then between you and your spouse. Vows that say, when you mess up, because I know you're going to, because you're a sinner, I'm gonna lean into that relationship now. I'm not gonna back away, start pulling away slowly, or even just like that, I'm out of here. I'm gonna lean into you and say, how can I be your encourager? How can I help you in this? Let's go on this road together. And we can also do like Psalm 116 said that David read earlier, we can keep our vows in the presence of the Lord and in the presence of the people because there's people watching, whether it be someone in your own family, maybe even your spouse is watching how you're gonna respond. Mm -hmm. I've learned so much from David on how God loves me by his love towards me. And then those people that are watching, we can show them there's hope for them too because we serve this God who keeps his covenant to us. I, you're causing me to think back to the times that I have been not so great to my husband. It's been more than once, but then to, to hear that forgiveness, you know, yeah. to know that I know you had a bad moment. You responded badly, but mm -hmm. I still love you and that's not going to yeah, change things. Definitely. David and Tracy Sellers with Vows to Keep. Check out their website, VowsToKeep.com. If your marriage is in any situation that you just think, oh, I just don't know what the future is, well, that phone call to their ministry could be the life-changing, saving situation that you will never, I promise, never regret. Vows to Keep, developing biblically healthy marriages. There you can see their contact information right there on the screen. More from Vows to Keep to come in the coming weeks.